Weeks ago, we saw a local hazmat team in action when the Freeport City Hall was evacuated over a suspicious package. Yeah, and today we're getting a closer look at the team and what it takes to respond to these intense situations. After 150 hours of training, Brandon Reese will become an active member of the Freeport Fire Department's hazmat team, a role he's ready to take on. You know, my wife and everybody, they, they understand that there's a bunch of training that goes into this and and we're always learning. Even with extensive training, those who've called the hazmat team home for more than a decade never get tired of expecting the unexpected. There's never a day to day, this is what's going to happen here. There's always a different scenario. We can train and train and train and train, but the Every scenario is always a little bit different. Out in Freeport, the hazmat team responds to toxic leaks, spills, or powders anywhere in Stevenson County or beyond. Here in Freeport, we have the rail system. Um, a lot of different chemicals come through. Um, and also, we have, a, we have a company on the other side of town that... Uh, um, they use chemicals to coat steels. Once activated, hazmat crews follow specific guidelines and boundaries before other companies or government agencies clean up toxic materials. We use the term dam dike divert. We don't do any of the cleanup. Uh, we just worry about uh, making the leak better and, and trying to stop it. And of course, life safety is always number one. In between the handful of hazmat situations a year, team-wide training fills in those gaps between incidents. But crew members say the greatest resource keeping them informed is each other. The, us new guys, we're, we're eager to learn, and uh, the guys that have been here are eager to teach. That was photojournalist Nathan Langley reporting from Freeport with our Brittany Hardaway. Reese and two others begin their hazmat journey with classes starting this spring.